So I should say that we have two ministers with us today. We have the minister representing the Republic of Cyprus, Minister of the Interior, Eleni Marbru, whom we welcome warmly. We also have a minister in the British government, a great friend of Cyprus, Theresa Villiers, Member of Parliament for Chicken Barney, who is here with us to show her solidarity and her support for our cause. Theresa will not speak, but she is here with us, as she has been every year for many, many years, and I thank her for that warmly. Thank you, Theresa. Honorary members of Parliament and the European Parliament, former members of the European Parliament, GLA members, councillors, distinguished guests, friends, Fellow Cypriots of the UK, Sympatriotes and Sympatriotices. Nearly four decades have now passed since Cyprus was betrayed by a fascist coup and was then invaded and mutilated by the Turkish army. The stark, painful reality remains that Turkish troops continue to occupy the northern territory of the Republic of Cyprus. For 38 years, the world has condemned the occupation, but the international community's condemnation of Turkey's acts through innumerable United Nations resolutions have not been followed up by deeds. The world today is a very different place to what it was nearly 40 years ago. But the injustice perpetrated against Cyprus remains as pervasive and as insidious as ever. The endless human tragedy of the missing, of the refugees, of the enclaved, the outrage of Turkey's apartheid on an island united throughout its history, now ethnically cleansed and forcibly split into two. The unacceptable colonization of Cyprus by Turkey's systematic transfer of its own citizens to the areas it occupies the deliberate destruction of the island's national, cultural and religious heritage. How can these criminal acts be squared with Turkey's international treaty obligations, its obligations under the UN Charter and the resolutions of the United Nations, not to mention its undertakings to the European Union? a union that it seeks to join. Turkey's policy is duplicitous, but it is, not, but it is consistent. And it is to use the passage of time to rewrite history. Just as in the case of the Armenian genocide in the early 20th century, which has been furiously denied by successive Turkish governments, including the current one, in the face of incontrovertible evidence, Turkey seeks to wipe out from our minds the atrocities committed by the Turkish army against the Cypriot people in 1974 and the island's continued violation since then. The Turkish ambassador to the UK objects to the terms illegal occupation and invasion, which are included in motions supported by our parliamentary friends in the House of Commons. Turkey finds our presence and what we do in support of Cyprus in this country uncomfortable. 
it wants to silence us. So much so that there have been efforts by various Turkish elements to derail this rally on the ludicrous grounds that it constitutes a hate crime. But let these people hear loud and clear. We shall not be silenced. We shall not be extinguished. Our voices will be heard. For as long as we breathe, for as long as we think, for as long as we speak, we shall stand up for the rights of this proud island and its resilient people. Our dream of a free, united Cyprus lives on. It is not a hate crime to want your country back. It is not a hate crime to want all Cypriots to live together as free people in their own united island. Ours is a political struggle for human rights, freedom, justice and democracy. These are the values we believe in and these are the values we fight for today and every day. Turkey's arrogance and disregard of its obligations is unfortunately bolstered by the acquiescence or indifference of powers which have a moral as well as a legal duty to act. But indifference to injustice is often as insidious to the injustice itself. The United States of America, as Turkey's most powerful ally, has failed to fulfill its international role in relation to Cyprus. But the United Kingdom, the country of which most of us are citizens, has an even higher duty to act, derived from its historic treaty obligations. And we therefore ask the British Prime Minister once again to make Cyprus a priority of his government as it deserves to be and to apply real pressure on Turkey to change its intransigence. This is not a zero-sum game. The benefits of reunification will be many and varied, naturally for the Cypriots themselves, but also for Europe, the United Kingdom, Turkey herself as well, and every other regional power. Everyone will benefit from a reunited Cyprus. To the Turkish Cypriots, we say this, Cyprus belongs to you as much as it belongs to Greek Cypriots and all other Cypriots. But Cyprus does not belong to Turkey. And the Cypriot people will never accept the domination of Cyprus by Turkey. So today, we join in spirit the tens of thousands of Turkish Cypriots who have demonstrated repeatedly in occupied Nicosia against Turkey's occupation. And we call out together in their words, peace, independent, united Cyprus. Cyprus belongs to the Cypriots. Today, we rally for a free Cyprus, but we also celebrate the assumption by the Republic of Cyprus of the presidency of the European Union. It is a moment of immense pride for all of us that our country of origin has assumed this vitally important institutional role within the large family of European nations. Arrogantly and insultingly for the EU, 
Turkey, an EU applicant country, refuses to acknowledge Cyprus's vital institutional role. But we have no doubt that the Republic will carry out its role successfully and effectively. Today, the Cypriot community of the United Kingdom stands united proudly by the side of the President, of the Government and of the people of the Republic of Cyprus as the island fulfills its important responsibilities as President of the European Union. A President of Europe still fighting for justice. Sito i Kipros! Sito mi hai paranomeni anexartidi che è l'eftere i Kipros! Ours, members of the House of Commons were here who have turned out to show their solidarity with our cause. Some familiar faces, some newer faces as well. I'm delighted they're all here. And I'd like to invite uh, all of them to say a few words. I'd like to invite uh, our very good friend, Charles Tanner, member of the European Parliament for London. Charles has been with us for many years and I know he has been here on our side. I know I've been presiding over these proceedings now for six years and he's been here every year that I've had the privilege to do this. And I know he had been here before that as well. And I'm sure he will tell you how many years he has been doing this. And I'm delighted that he's here. He's a consistent, principled friend of the island. Thank you, Charles. The podium is yours. Um, friends from the uh, London and UK Cypriot community, Peter, thank you for those very warm, welcoming words. Uh, Your Excellency the High Commissioner, parliamentary colleagues, councillors, assemblymen, uh, and all those who share my solidarity and friendship with the Cypriot people. In fact, Peter, it's been my 13th year now attending the annual rally as a London MEP. In fact, I started off this in 99 alongside Theresa Villiers, who I know can't speak Speak, but we all know exactly what Theresa would like to say, where she's not a minister of the Crown, in saying exactly the same sentiments as I'm about to demonstrate that 38 long years of an injustice still prevail in Europe. It's absolutely unacceptable. The only good thing I can report this year, and I have to say the rain has just started, so maybe that's a, a bit of good luck to us all, um, is that 2012 is a special year. Peter's already mentioned the Cypriot. Um, European Union Presidency and Office, and I'll come to that in a second. It's also, of course, 60 years of Her Majesty reigning over in this country as head of state, but also as head of the Commonwealth. I think we can be proud of the Queen and the Commonwealth and Cyprus and United Kingdom, which links us all in a big, happy family. And I think that's a great year to remember. We'll always remember that. And just on the issue of the EU Presidency, last week in Strasbourg, I had the honour of meeting President Christophias, who gave a magnificent speech even tinged with a bit of a sense of humour by saying, I may be a card-carrying member of the Communist Party, but I'm not planning a communist revolution in the bowels of the European Union just yet, as I actually have to save the banking system and think about a banking union for the Eurozone. So that got the House actually warmed up to his speech. It was a great speech, and I also had a chance to talk to Mavroyanis, the Europe Minister, to see what the priorities would be for Cyprus in the six-month presidency. Uh, one of the issues is climate climate change, well I haven't noticed that today in London I have to say, uh, the Doha conference, uh, the issue of water conservation which will be very very important given the uh, problems that Cyprus has faced uh, in terms of water shortages, the expertise that have been acquired in Cyprus in desalination, that will be a very useful thing for the rest of Europe and that will be transmitted by the Environment Minister. The issue I'm afraid where the Conservatives slightly part company on the uh, EU budget, the multi-annual financial framework for two 
2020. That will be in the hands of the Cypriot presidency, one where there may be slight problems with the Conservatives. Um, but all in all, it will be a very testing time for Cyprus. Cyprus is going through an economic crisis, a banking bailout itself. It will actually, of course, have the issue as well of getting money from Russia, what that means for foreign policy. But next week in, in Brussels, I'm actually meeting the Cypriot foreign minister to talk about Cypriot and EU foreign policy. And one of the things that does give me slight hope, of course, is a realignment of foreign policy in the eastern Mediterranean. Now, with Cyprus having a, renew, a newfound friendship with the state of Israel, which traditionally it wasn't too close to, that, of course, will enable it to use Israel as a friend and leverage that internationally to put more pressure on Turkey in terms of coming to some meaningful conclusions to the reunification talks uh, between Christophe, President Christofias and Mr. Oroglu uh, from the Turkish community of the north. So there is some interesting things going on in terms of foreign policy, but I, I, at the moment, of course, we just don't know where it will all end. But it has been 38 long years of total injustice. I have remained a solid friend of Cyprus throughout. Rest assured, as I said to Mr. Mavroyanis, the MEPs from London and many others in the European Parliament will do their best to support the EU six-month presidency for Cyprus. It's a small country, but I have huge confidence in the hard work and enterprising spirit of the Cypriots to get through this six months, in spite of the fact that outrageously Turkey has had a ban on any cooperation with the Council of Ministers throughout these six months on the basis it doesn't recognize the Republic of Cyprus. That in itself is an outrage, and of course, you might ask, how can you be a candidate uh, country for EU membership when you don't recognize one of its key member states and the one that is the president in office for the next six months? Absolutely absurd. So all I can say is thank you for all your support as a community you've given me, as your MEP for London for so many years. Oh, the sun's coming out. That has to be a good omen. Um, and uh, rest assured, I will be here every year for as long as I serve as a London MEP, showing solidarity with the Cypriot pe people and showing my complete rejection of the Turkish occupation of northern Cyprus. So yes, Turkish troops out of Cyprus. Long live Cyprus. <laughs> Thank you so much, Charles, for those unequivocal words of support. It is raining, but we'll never give up. You know, there are, there's a, the sun shines up <laughs> at the same time. Um, I would like to invite uh, another great friend of Cyprus, somebody who has always been on our side, and that is Andy Love, Member of Parliament for Edmonton. Andy represents a constituency with quite a few Cypriots within it, and he's here with us to show his support. Andy Love. Now I know how Gene Kelly felt when he was singing in the rain. Let me start by congratulating Cyprus on its accession to the six months presidency of the European Union. This is an awesome responsibility that places Cyprus right at the heart of Europe which is exactly where it needs to be at this time and we hope positive things will, will emanate from that presidency. But of course it isn't just Europe that needs to be uh, engaged with Cyprus. Britain itself has a very unique role to play. For first of all it's a guarantor power of the independence and territorial integrity of Cyprus. Secondly, it's a member of the European Union, a very prominent one. Thirdly, it's on the Security Council of United Nations, which has been holding the talks. We need, as a country, to put more pressure on the UN to get these talks moving in a positive direction. And, of course, we're mem both members of the Commonwealth, which is critical in improving goodwill across the nations of the, this world. But of course, we also need to do more at a European Union level. I believe in the future the European Union will have an absolutely central role to play. Not just because Cyprus is the president for this six-month period, but because 
the European Union is the guarantor of human rights for its members. The fundamental freedoms that all of the members of the European Union, other than Cyprus, can guarantee must be held to account on the island. You must be able to move freely. You must be able to settle. Property should be respected. All of those things can be guaranteed by the European Union and we need to set about ensuring that they play their part in finding a resolution for Cyprus. Let me, while the rain pours down on you all, pay tribute to the diaspora. You are living proof that the diaspora cares about what happens to Cyprus. And I salute you for that. I can see, as I look around, many, many constituents of mine here in the audience, and I salute you. And I particularly salute the relatives of the missing people. An outrage perpetrated 30 years ago, and people still don't know what happened to their sons, their children, their father, their uncles. It's an absolute disgrace. And I have to say to you, the missing people will be coming to Parliament next week. We will greet them as we do every year. But I think we have better news this year than before because we are about to set up a parliamentary inquiry into the missing people and we hope the publicity will lead to greater movement and greater acknowledgement of the crimes that were committed in 1974. So I look forward to that. Let me say one thing finally to all of you. We need to double, redouble our efforts and as a parliamentary friend of Cyprus, I'm here to do just that. We need to redouble our efforts to end the division of the island, to create a free, united and independent Cyprus. That's the goal and I want to work with all of you to achieve it in the future. I would now like to invite uh, a friend of our island, a friend of mine, who has been a minister for Europe, who knows the problem of Cyprus, Chris Bryant, Member of Parliament for Rhondda Valley in Wales, who has made a special effort to be here with us today. Chris, I'm delighted that you are here. Thank you so much. Thanks very much. I can see another cloud over there, so I think I will be as brief as I possibly can. I didn't bring the weather here myself, but I think from Wales, that is. Um, but it would be nice if all the Cypriots who live in this country have brought the weather from Cyprus to the United Kingdom. It might, might even help Andy Murray. So I congratulate you on being here rather than watching Andy Murray at home. Um, uh, look, I just want, I, I have no Cypriot community in my own constituency. I'm here because when I was Minister for Europe for about five minutes, I, I went to Cyprus and I saw something which most British people don't even know about, which is why events like today are so important, which is, it is an absolute disgrace for, the po for every politician in Europe that we have a capital city in Europe that is divided. That is a disgrace to all of us. It's a disgrace that we... It's a disgrace that we have a divided uh, island, but it's also a dis disgrace that after so many years, so few people who lost loved ones in those tragic weeks and months, <coughs> so few of them have actually been able to track down exactly what happened. <coughs> Excuse me. So I think... <coughs> I'm dying, Egypt. So, the most important thing is that we make sure that the younger generation know what happened in Cyprus and know what's happening in Cyprus today. The Turkish government swore blind to the European Union that they would open up the courts, they, uh, the, the ports rather. They swore blind that they would make sure that everybody who had lost land would be compensated or have their land back or and that every single person who had lost a loved one would know what had happened. None of those promises has yet been kept. So we need 
need to make sure that the British government today does everything in its power to push Turkey to honour its promises so that we, in a year's time, in two years' time, will not still be coming back here to complain about a divided island, but to rejoice about a united island. I really appreciate those words, especially from somebody who has served as a Minister for Europe and who understands the issue of Cyprus so well. Thank you so much, Chris Bryant. We do have uh, another Member of Parliament, a Labour Member of Parliament, who I know has been a great friend of Cyprus for many years as well. He has been a senior member of successive Labour governments. His name is Frank Dobson, and I'm delighted that he's here with us today. Frank Dobson, Member of Parliament. Friends, at least I assume everybody here is a friend, and a friend of a united and independent Cyprus. And I can remember campaigning largely at the instigation of my very distinguished predecessor as MP for Hoban and St Pancras, Lena Jager MP, who was probably the greatest British friend Cyprus has ever had. And uh, I can remember campaigning then, and we campaigned for Cyprus to become independent of Britain. I never thought that 40 odd years later we'd be still campaigning for Cyprus independence, but in this case independence from Turkey. But I do think we do have something to celebrate. If you look back all those years ago when we were campaigning for Cyprus independence, the European Union consisted of six states. It now consists of 20 more states, and Cyprus has the presidency. And I think that that is a wonderful thing for Cyprus, and we should all celebrate it. But all the rest of the European Union should be ashamed. Every single government should be ashamed that they haven't worked hard enough to get a united Cyprus and haven't made clear to Turkey that if Turkey wants to join the European Union, it's got to stick by the rules. And it's got to stick by the rules from the start. It can't pick and choose. Britain can't pick and choose who gets the presidency of the European Union. And Turkey as an outsider certainly shouldn't be allowed to try to pick and choose who will have the presidency. So I hope that this six months of the Cyprus presidency, combined with a bigger effort by the British government uh, and the government of the United States, will bring pressure to bear on Turkey to agree to what would be a lasting settlement. And it wouldn't just be for the benefit of Greek Cypriots, that would be immensely to the benefit of all Cypriots, including the Turkish Cypriots because I'm convinced most Turkish Cypriots would like to see the back of the Turkish army and the Turkish government all turfed out of Cyprus. So I wish you well in the campaign. I promise to continue to join with you in this campaign. We can't have a situation where the presidency country of the European Union is occupied by an alien force. That ought to be unacceptable to everybody in Europe, just as it's unacceptable to you. And that's what we've got to campaign for. Thank you very much. Frank, uh, I mean, those words mean so much to us, coming from somebody who has been a very senior politician for a long time. Your words are full of wisdom, and we really appreciate what you have said here today. Thank you so much. Now, we have another politician 
who has been an outspoken, passionate supporter of our cause. Somebody I've worked with very closely in the last six years, nearly six years, as president of the Federation, who has been extremely helpful to the Federation, to our community, within the House of Commons. And he has been here for many, many years, year after year, present to support what we do. His name is Alan Neal, he needs no introduction from me. I'm delighted that he's here once again. Mr. President, uh, High Commissioner, Ministers, that's both of them, the British and the, uh, the Cypriot one. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, can I first of all bring you fraternal greetings from the Midlands, East and West, from Birmingham, from Derby, from Sheffield, from Chesterfield, from Doncaster, from Lincoln, from Nottingham, Peterborough, and of course Mansfield, my own constituency. All of those people stand four square with all of you to campaign for justice until we will win. And let me say, I repeat that particular objective every year when I come here. When I say, we can win this. It is not a defeat. It is not a, it is a shame, as Frank Dobson has just recently quoted on this platform, that we haven't had more force out of all the governments of Europe to try and get restitution on this matter. But I have to say, it's a shame not only for Conservative and the present Conservative government, it's also a shame of previous Labour government, of which I served in myself. Yes, Labour did bring, did bring and was responsible above every other state in Europe, did bring Cyprus into the European Union. But that on its own is not enough. What we have to do is campaign for reunification of the island and spare no sweat at all until we achieve those objectives. We have to ensure that we get justice for those people who remain missing and their families stand idly by waiting for a, a message or a solution. We have to find a solution to all those people who've lost their homes and properties and now the land and property has been sold willy-nilly to you Europeans across the breadth and breadth of Europe, including British people, which is a shame on Britain. What we have to do is take to Turkey. It's time for you to stop interfering in a free sovereign country of Europe and an ally of the United Kingdom, and we want you to do that straight away. And let me give Turkey one final message. One final message. All of you are philandering around Europe at the present time, trying to claim some kind of claim under the oil and gas in the oil wells of the Mediterranean southern area, including well four, area four, which contains the biggest find of natural oil and gas ever found in the Middle East. You have no claim. It is Cyprus's oil and gas, not yours. So I said at the beginning of the address, the repeated message, that we can win this. We can get the land back. We can find what happened to the missing. We can bring justice and reunification to Cyprus. Comrades, we can and we will. Thank you, Alan. Your words are always passionate and inspiring. I appreciate that. Thank you so much. I would now like to invite our main speaker for the event, the Cypriot Minister of the Interior, or I should say the Minister of Home Affairs of Cyprus, Eleni Mavru. Thank you so much for being here with us, Eleni. I think Eleni Mavru. It's a good omen. Uh, distinguished uh, friends, uh, minister, uh, parliamentarians, councillors, Simbatriotes, Simbatriotes, on behalf of the Cyprus government, I would like to thank you all for your presence here today to mark 38 years since the unlawful invasion of Cyprus by Turkey. The tragedy that began with the well and long planned fascist coup against President Magarios on the 15th of July was culminated five days later with the landing of the Turkish invasion forces at the beaches of Kyrenia. For 38 years now, 
Turkey is responsible for the illegal occupation of a large part of the territory of the Republic of Cyprus, the violation of the sovereignty of the Republic of Cyprus, the violation of the human rights and basic freedoms of all the people of Cyprus. During these 38 years, Turkey has been changing the demographic composition of Cyprus through the illegal massive colonization of the occupied areas. It eradicates every single cultural and religious element and every trace of the presence of Greek Cypriots in the areas that it occupies illegally. Since 2008, the President of the Republic of Cyprus, Mr. Dimitris Christofias, has undertaken intensive efforts in order to overcome the deadlock faced in the Cyprus problem. These efforts brought about the commencement of a dialogue, dialogue between the leaders of the two communities. These negotiations were based on the understanding that the comprehensive state settlement will necessarily provide for a bizonal, bicommunal, federal Republic of Cyprus with a single sovereignty, citizenship, and international personality and with political equality as provided for in the relevant UN Security Council resolutions. Unfortunately, these efforts, as in the past, were met with the intransigent stand of Turkey. In view of this situation, the United Nations and the international community in general must turn with persistence towards Turkey and demand from Turkey to cooperate for the achievement of a solution based on UN resolutions and numerous European Council decisions. The Greek Cypriot side is ready for the continuation of the negotiations even during the time of the Cypriot presidency of the Council of the EU. <coughs> Something that unfortunately the Turkish side rejects. At this point I feel the need to underline <coughs> that Turkey's threats with regard to the assumption of the presidency of the European Union by the Republic of Cyprus bring the occupying power in conflict with the institutions and the member states of the Union as a whole and not just with Cyprus. Cyprus will exercise the presidency of the EU with impartiality and will operate as an honest broker in order to achieve agreement on important issues that affect the present and the future of Europe. We are convinced that the Cypriot presidency will be successful and that this development will strengthen Cyprus as a sovereign entity and enhance the role of Cyprus internationally. Dear friends of Cyprus, we have on many occasions repeated that there can be no other end to possible future negotiations but an agreed settlement which will provide for the evolution of the unitary Republic of Cyprus into a federal state will be, will, which will be the common homeland of the Greek Cypriots and the Turkish Cypriots. I want to assure you that irrespective of the difficulties and the obstacles, we will continue the struggle in order to do justice to our country, Cyprus, and to our people, so that with the solution of the Cyprus problem, we can build a common homeland in where human rights and basic freedoms will apply for all the people and where there will be peace and security throughout its sovereign territory. A country that is demilitarized and free and prosperous for all. On behalf of the president, the government and the people of Cyprus, once again I thank you for your solidarity and noble efforts all these years to achieve a just and fair settlement in Cyprus.
Ευχαριστώ πάρα πολύ την Ελένη Μαύρη του Ρόλ Εσωτερικό τη Κυπριακή Δημοκρατία. I thank the Minister of the Interior of the Republic of Cyprus, Eleni Mambro, for being here with us and for that uh, message of solidarity. I would now like us to keep one minute silence for all of those who gave their lives for the freedom of Cyprus as well as the missing. Thank you very much. But before we finish the proceedings, I would like to express my thanks once again to our main speaker, Eleni Mavru, who's been made a special effort to be here. I know how busy she is with the uh, duties that she has as, uh, the, as the context of the presidency of the uh, European uh, Council by Cyprus. And I know she made a special effort to be here, and we really appreciate that, Eleni. Thank you very much. I would like to thank our parliamentary friends, Teresa Villiers, of course, whom I mentioned before, all of our other members of the Parliament and the European Parliament who have turned out today in the rain, now the rain has gone, thankfully, to be here with us today. We do have a number of other people who have been here with us for many years, whom I would like to acknowledge as well. And uh, I would like to acknowledge Eddie O'Hara, a former member of parliament, who uh, has been a great friend of Cyprus for many years, now a retired member of parliament, but nevertheless, he's still here with us to show his solidarity and support. We've got Councillor Brian Coleman, who is a uh, former mayor of Barnard, GLA member, uh, who is here with us every year as well. We've got Andrew Dismal, who is the newly elected member of the GLA, former member of parliament, and he is here as well, and I thank him for his support throughout uh, the last uh, few years. We have um, Councillor Rutter, representing the mayor of Barnet, and we have the leader of Barnet, Councillor Cornelius, as well, and I welcome them too. Mike Freer is here, I hear. He has just arrived, so I'm delighted that Mike Freer, Member of Parliament in Finchley, has joined us as well. I thank all of you for being here, and I want to thank all of you for being here year after year. I know how hard it is, and that is, as I said in my introductory speech, Turkey's policy. It is to make us forget about the tragedy, about the crimes that it has committed. But I see that year after year we have been here in Trafalgar Square to demonstrate our opposition to the injustice that remains on the island. Finally, I want to pay tribute to my colleagues once again this year, because we have a federation of all the organizations of our community, and it is through that unity of purpose, the united front, that we have been able to demonstrate in this country that we have been able to perform such a, an effective role in the United Kingdom. And I have no doubt that had we not been here, the attitude, perhaps the policy of the British government would not have been as amenable. I know it's not as good as it should be, but uh, nevertheless, I think that without our presence here, they wouldn't have been as aware of the issues as they are today. And I want to invite our friends, our parliamentary friends, and I want to invite the vice presidents and the rest of the executive of the federation, my good friends Andreas Bobaevribidis, to come forward, please, 
Χριστόδουλος Τηλιανού, Μιχάλης Έλληνας, Μάικλ Κασίς, Πάμπος Χαραλάμπους. I want you to come forward in a display of unity before our community and Cyprus, because Cyprus needs to be united as well if we are to win this battle against, 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 against a much bigger power than we are. And I'd like to invite our younger generation as well, Christos Karaulis, Peter Haralambus, if Peter is up here, to join us as well. And Susie Constantinidis, where is Susie, to come and stand next to me, because she has been, come here Susie, come here, you have, you have been the organizing, the chair of the organizing committee, and she has done great work in the face of considerable adversity in the last few months to organize all of this. Have I missed anybody? Karaulis. Andreas Karaulis, of course, yeah. is the executive <laughs> secretary of the Federation. But I also want the minister from Cyprus to come forward. And I would like the minister from the British government to come forward as well. Because I think it's important that all the members of parliament come forward, the former members of parliament, to sing the national anthem with us to demonstrate the solidarity that exists for our cause in this country. Where is Frank Dobson? Frank Dobson should be here as well. Frank Dobson should be here. And the Cyprus High Commissioner. We will now sing the national anthem. <laughs> 